guys, how's the running been? It's Thomas Olsen here, aka the 4 foot runner. In this week's video, you guys will have the pleasure of watching me run. And I will help you guys see the strengths and weaknesses in my running form. And hopefully, I will help you guys realize what 4 foot running form looks like and how to do it yourselves just by watching me run. When I was trying to learn how to run 4 foot, I found that this was one of my favorite ways to learn how to do so it was just watching other runners that I knew ran perfect form and I tried to think to myself as I ran how they looked and eventually it just kind of came as I practiced and worked hard to replicate what they did. Just a quick disclaimer for you guys, I am not a professional runner and that will become obvious as you see me run or if you looked at my times. I am only a high school runner and... I train to run the 5k and I do tend to be pretty decent and place pretty well in my races at least top five and sometimes I even win them and so I would just like to share with you guys how I do so and how it looks when I run. I t will try to give you guys as much info on this form as I can in the smallest amount of time and smallest amount of detail as I can because I want to let you guys know what it looks like, what it sounds like and how it is without boring the crap out of you but for those who love the boring stuff as I do there will be more videos and it will become more and more in depth another thing that I'd like to point out is that there are many people who take this type of running form to the extreme and say that this is kind of a cure-all way to run and that you will always be injury free I can tell you that that is simply not true when you're training high mileage and at a higher speed you are simply going to get injured more often than when you're going slow and easy. So depending on how you guys run and why you guys are running will also vary on how you guys get injured, where you get injured, and how often you guys get injured. To prove that, I have been running four foot form for over a year now, and I did about eight months of hard training, hard working, without any problems. Felt amazing, never felt better. But about four weeks before conference or like two weeks ago at my home meet I finally came down with a stress fracture in my fourth and second metatarsal and that has kept me from running running for a while so I've had to do some agua jogging which I will do I'm sure I'll do a video on I've had to run on a zero gravity treadmill I've had to do elliptical and I've had to do a lot of biking and lifting my goal in training the past while has been to stay in shape and maybe even get in a little bit better of shape. But that is hard to do when you are trying to stay in shape for running and you simply cannot run. But I would dare say so that I've done a pretty decent job. Now I will get into the nitty and gritty of this video and give you a verbal description as you watch the visual description of my running. Some of the things I want you guys to be looking for that are kind of unique to forefoot running is where I land under my body. When you strike forefoot, it kind of forces you to land directly under the center mass of your body. And when you are running faster, the center of your mass will be uh, in front of where your torso is because of your velocity. And so the ideal place to land to minimize the amount of forward braking is landing directly under the mass of your body. The next part I want you guys to look out for is how my foot strikes the ground. Not where it strikes the ground in comparison with my body, but how the foot lands when it first puts weight onto the ground. You want your foot to land near the toes or midfoot or what people would call the ball of your foot because when you do so you're able to utilize your calf muscles to absorb the shock and reload like a spring it's simply much more efficient than heel striking because you don't get it you're not able to utilize your calf muscles fully and it's more of a bounding after hearing these first two things you might be thinking to yourself wait I thought that you want to land in front of your body a little bit and you want to land on your heel to increase your stride length but that is not the case um, you want your stride length needs to increase with the speed at which you are moving your cadence 
which is how many steps you take per minute, should be about 180. And that is scientifically proven to be about the most efficient leg speed um, there is. And so by keeping that cadence at about 180 and not letting it drop to 160 or 150 and keeping that cadence very, very consistent, this allows you to increase your speed and increase your stride length without changing the way you land or how fast you move your legs. Your legs get used to the same speed and thus all you have to do to go faster is push off the ground a little bit harder and not not change how many steps you take per minute. It simply increases your endurance and it keeps your rhythm the same whether you're going slow or fast. This helps keep your body calm while going fast because it's used to moving just just as fast technically. It's used to moving its legs just as fast. It's just not quite used to exerting as much energy which you'll learn to do as you do speed training. Weight training will help you increase the stride length without compromising your cadence because it helps your muscles gain strength and endurance. Another thing to look at when running is arm movement. You don't want your arm movement to be extreme, but you want there to be movement. I tend to not move my arms quite enough. I tend to run with my arms, not as a mid-distance runner, but more of a marathon, how, how a marathoner would move their arms. I move my shoulders more than I move my arms, which does tend to be more efficient, but it, it sometimes can hinder your stride length and how far you can extend your hip flexor. Another important thing to help you increase your speed and efficiency is the simple fact that you don't want to be moving your legs side to side. You want to stay in a very linear motion when running and you don't want to be having your legs overlap or too far apart because that simply wastes energy and it can cause some horizontal forces onto your hips and knees which can cause some damage. Another thing you may notice while I run if you look very closely is the fact that my hips are tilted a little bit forward and this is due to the fact that I am letting gravity carry me forward instead of um, pushing off the ground which over striders or heel strikers usually tend to do I lean forward and let gravity take me and just allow my body to propel itself forward with its own body weight this can be difficult to learn but it does greatly increase your speed and efficiency as a runner. Now it's time to do some slow-mos to help you guys see my foot strike and see all these things I've been talking about up close. So I'm gonna pick out a few picture, a few pieces in these clips that really show and emphasize my form. <laughs>
I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it fulfilled its purpose to help teach you guys what four foot running form is and how it differs from heel striking and I hope you don't think I'm a crazy man for running barefoot in these videos and please like and comment below ask questions start following my channel subscribe if you haven't already and thanks for watching guys happy running